Hi everyone, Ralph here from the library. Thank you for taking some time to join with me and allow me to share just a couple of things that are on my heart today. You know, uh, one of the first things maybe to start with is people often walk into my study and they look around and they say, wow, look at all these books. And then they'll ask the question, have you read all these books? Well, you know, as I want to be truthful, the answer is no, I've not read all of these books. I have read a significant number of them from cover to cover, but others are reference books, dictionaries, encyclopedias, or commentaries that I may get for just a particular uh, chapter or some information that I need for a particular study that I'm doing. And I haven't read through those books from cover to cover, but maybe over the course of my lifetime, I'll come close. But yeah, the answer is no. I've not read every single one of these books. Some of them that I have read, I've read more than once because of the profound impact they've had on my life. One of those books is The Life of the Beloved by Henry Nouwen. I read this book back when I was working on my Doctor of Ministries degree, and it was transformational as I went through it. Uh, the main premise is based off of the experience of Jesus' baptism. After Jesus is baptized by John and he's coming up, up out of the water, uh, we read that the heavens were open and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. And we hear the Father speak saying, You are my Son whom I love. You are my beloved Son whom I love. And, and some of the translations add, with whom I am well pleased. But you know, when Nowen took that phrase and applied it to a friend's life, because he wanted him to come to know Jesus as his savior, he said to him, you are beloved by God. He's pleased with you. And that just struck me in a way that it hadn't ever before, that God, my heavenly father, loves me and he's pleased with me. And it's not based on my performance, certainly not based on my looks or my education or my financial resources, all which are pretty meager at this point in time, but it's based on what Jesus has done for me out of his great love. In fact, the Bible makes it clear that Jesus, God's one and only son, came into the world to die a death he didn't deserve to die, to pay a price he didn't owe. I owed the price I couldn't pay, therefore I deserved to die. My sentence was death, but Jesus said, Father, I'll take his place. And he died on the cross in my place so that when I put my faith and trust in him as my savior, I received the gift of eternal life. And so I don't have to die. I'm promised eternal life through my relationship with Jesus. And so the Father looks upon me and says, Ralph, you're my beloved son. I love you. I'm pleased with you. And if you know Jesus, he looks upon you and says, you are my beloved daughter. You are my beloved son. I'm pleased with you. We don't have to perform. We don't have to uh, act a certain way. We're loved because of Jesus. And that's so important to us, especially as we meet here in a library that's filled with many books, because as profound an effect this one book had upon my life, there is one book that is a library of books that has a profound effect upon everyone, and that is the Bible. The Bible literally is a library of 66 smaller books that tell the story of God's love for you and for me. A love that never changes, a love that is constant, a love that is sure no matter what is happening in the world. You know, we live in a time of great uncertainty and there's even more confusion in some circles now as to what tomorrow will hold. I don't know what tomorrow will hold, but I know that God holds tomorrow 
in his hands, just as he held yesterday and as he holds today. I know he has not relinquished his rule over the universe, and I am confident that he who holds all things together by the word of his power can certainly control the things in my life that I have no control over. So I squarely put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I firmly put my faith and trust in my Heavenly Father. I firmly put my faith and trust in the Holy Spirit who will guide my steps each and every moment of each and every day. You know, the Bible has many wonderful verses. We've looked at some of the more significant ones even recently in our study of Philippians. But you know, in Proverbs chapter three, we read, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I pray that you and I will do that today that we'll put our faith and trust in God, that he may direct our steps, guide our steps on the path that he would have us walk. We might have confidence holding on to the hand of our Father who looks upon you and looks upon me and says, you are my beloved child. I'm pleased with you. So let's live fearlessly. Let's live courageously because our Heavenly Father is in control and He will get us through this difficult time. Heavenly Father, we wanna trust in your provision for all of our needs. We know that there are many who are saying one thing and others who are saying another thing and government is trying to come to our rescue to bail us out of this significant jam. But we pray that those of us who know you personally through your son, Jesus Christ, will recognize that the best way out of this situation is to put our faith and trust in you, to allow you to guide our steps aright, to know that because you love us and you declare us to be your beloved son, your beloved daughter, that you're pleased with us, that you will safely get us to the other side. So we place our faith and trust in you today. May we know the incredible depth of your love and may we not waver. Thank you, Father, for the assurance you give us that you will not leave us, you will not forsake us. You've placed us on the solid rock of your son, Jesus Christ, who died so that we might live. And because he lives, we will live, not somehow, but triumphantly. We declare this to be so in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for joining with me. Look for me again from the library.